Hello everyone, welcome to the Catholic Martial Artist. In this video today, we're going to talk about the luminous mysteries of the Rosary and why they are so important for our times. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you guys like this content I put out here, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And if there's anything you want me to cover in future videos, just comment down below your thoughts or any uh, opinions you have about this episode. Now, uh, before I get into the luminous mysteries of the Rosary, a lot of people have this concern that you shouldn't be adding to the rosary, right? I can't believe which papal document, but I believe there was a pope who said, you know, you shouldn't be adding things to the rosary. You should just keep it the way it is. Okay, and I'm greatly paraphrasing. So a lot of people look at that and be like, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't add things. But there's very there's something really important. The Holy Mary, Mother of God part, you know, at the end of, after the Hail Mary, that actually comes from a change that Pope Pius V added, okay? So he added that part of the rosary and no one bats an eye. But if Pope John Paul II adds a whole new set of mysteries, we all get concerned. But throughout, throughout history, saints have added things to the rosary. There's the St. Michael rosary. There's lots of different devotions to the rosary. And I think for, for our times right now, I don't think Our Lady would be opposed to praying more rosaries, right? I don't think she'd be opposed to it. And one of the things that St. That Dominic, you know, when St. Dominic was given the rosary by Our Lady, it was in response to St. Dominic asking, you know, how can I combat heresy? How can I combat the evil uh, things that are infiltrating the church? That are these, these ideas, these ideas that are affecting the, the sheep, right? Affecting the flock. How do I protect them? And what, what can I do to get them closer to, to the truth, right? And um, one of the things that Our Lady was saying is, you know, preach my Psalter. And she said that the rosary was a battering ram right now what is a bat battering ram is that thing they use to like break open doors right um so it's very powerful and if you meditate upon each mystery and you really think about it it does deal with a particular heresy and at the time there was a people who couldn't come to grasp with jesus being fully human and feel fully god right they couldn't come to grasp with that but if you go through all the mysteries like the joyful the sorrowful and the glorious um and even the the luminous you'll see in a moment they they get you to realize that like wait a minute jesus was fully man and fully god because he did things that both um that showed his humanity but also showed his divinity right and each thing that he did so it's important to meditate upon that now the luminous mysteries are genius and i think saint pope john Paul ii picked them for a very specific reason he picked them specifically for our times because each mystery addresses crises we have in the church right? Different crises, different issues going on. The first one, first luminous mystery is the baptism of the Lord. People are not getting baptized. People are waiting to get baptized. They don't think it's a big deal. I've seen, I've talked to, I've uh, met parents who've said things like, you know what, I'm just going to let my kids decide if they want to be baptized. I'm not going to force them to be Catholic. I'm just going to let them get baptized whenever they want. And they can make that decision as an adult. And <laughs> that kind of logic is, is, it just shows how little we care about the souls and we, we don't think of it as a big deal, but it's a big deal. This is your child's eternal salvation, right? Eternal salvation. As a baby, they have no say in the matter, just like they have no say in what they get to eat when they're a baby, right? You're not going to just let them, it's like, oh, you can eat whatever you want, baby. Like, no, that you would never do that. That's for a bodily need. Spiritual need is billion, infinitely more, literally infinitely more important, right? infinitely more important. So yeah, we need to get more children baptized. Don't let them wait. Don't delay it. And if you're watching this right now and you're thinking about delaying it, don't do it. Make Get them baptized. ASAP. So second thing, second luminous mystery, the wedding feast at Cana, right? Pretty obvious one. We have a crisis with divorce and the family and marriage is being separated. People living in sin, people, people, um, you know, divorcing and remarrying and, and problems with lust and people with uh, not wanting to get married, right? Um, and still living together. These are all issues that we're facing. And this is something that we got to pray about. And, you know, one of one something I heard that was really interesting too. <clears throat> um, this comes from, uh, actually, I actually heard of this on Taylor Marshall. Uh, now I, I got to say this with a, I got to say this. So I, I like everything Taylor Marshall has prior to 2017. <laughs> there's some things that he li that I like about him, but this is not, but he does have some really uh, insightful things to say. Um, and one of the things he says, like, you know, if your marriage is struggling, 
um, pray to Our Lady and ask uh, ask the Lord to change the water into wine, right? Meaning, add some something in your marriage to get it more exciting again, right? And that's a prayer you can legitimately make, you know? Uh, you say, Lord, we've ran out of wine, right? So to speak, right? Um, and that's, that's a beautiful thing. So that's the second thing. The third one is the proclamation of the kingdom, right? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. I think a lot of us are afraid to proclaim Jesus as Lord. We're kind of worried, just recently, right? Saying that phrase, Christ is King has become controversial for some reason, all right? And that's just because people on, on the extreme left side of the things um, are just deciding, you know, we can't have anything to do with Christ because it's, um, you know, controversial, right? And here's the thing, the world does not like Christians. It doesn't, specifically Catholics. It's always gonna hate Catholics. It's always gonna be persecution. This is what our Lord told us. But did Jesus stutter when he was preaching that? Did he stutter when he say, repent for the kingdom is at hand? Did he stutter when he say, when he said, this is my body and blood. Um, if you do not eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. Right? He didn't stutter when he said that. He, he proclaimed it. Just like he says, without me, you can do nothing. Right? And just like the apostles, they, well, they went to their deaths proclaiming the truth. And that's something we need in our world today. We need people proclaiming the truth and not being able to, and not being afraid of what people will do to this life. Because what does Jesus tell us? He tells us, do not be afraid of the man who can destroy the body, but the one who can destroy the body and the soul. And at judgment time, Jesus is going to ask you, you know, where were you when I was hungry, when I was thirsty, right? And and I heard this really interesting argument from, um, it's not an argument, it's a statement. It's by Penn, I think, believe it's Penn and Teller. He's like a magician guy. And he says, he's an atheist, but he was like, you know, you Christians, you know, if you really believed I was going to go to hell, you probably would preach to me a little harder, right? You probably preached to me a little harder. And and that's totally true. Like if we know, you know, someone who's not saved, like obviously we got to do this with prudence. We got to do this with, um, as the way St. Paul did, right? Where he was acknowledging what the people believe, but also not being afraid to, sh not being afraid to tell them the truth, right? And uh, as, as our Lord says, you know, you go into a town, if, if they accept you, you, your peace is on them. If they don't, shake off your feet and move on, right? Shake off your feet and move on. Does that mean we should stop praying for people? No. But what it does mean is that you got to say your peace. You got to plant the seed, right? There's a lot of seeds that aren't being planted, right? And I, and I felt this way as well. You know, I, I kind of was going through this phase where I thought like, you know what? Maybe I should just be in my, maybe I shouldn't talk about this stuff so openly. Maybe I should keep it to myself. But then I was thinking, you know, no, 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 no. I need to plant seeds because some seeds are going to fall among good soil. And I know for me in my life, there were moments and opportunities in which I was looking for something and I was searching and I didn't get it because people around me didn't, didn't give it to me. I didn't, I didn't meet someone who uh, was willing to share and open up about their faith, right? Even though I was wanting someone to do that because a lot of people get comfortable, right? We all get uncomfortable when we talk about our faith. And sometimes that discomfort comes from you actually want to talk about it, right? So it's something to think about. Now, the fourth luminous mystery is the transfiguration. This, like without a shadow of a doubt, proves that Jesus is the son of God. He's not some teacher. He's not some um, great person. He is the son of God. He's all those things, but he's also the son of God. And actually I was reflecting upon this today um, when I was praying the rosary. And again, take this with a grain of salt. This is just my own mental prayer experience. But when I was meditating upon the crowning of thorns, when I was doing mental prayer, what, what Jesus uh, spoke to my heart was, he is more mocked. The crowning of thorns represents this. this the crowning of thorns represents people who put a crown on Jesus in this life, that say he was a great teacher and a great prophet, but they don't believe he's the son of God. And that hurts, right? And that's a crown of thorns if you think about it, right? A crown of thorns is, a, it's a crown, right? It's a crown, it's something you place on your head, something that signifies uh, your status, but they put thorns in it, right? Now, if they plucked out all the thorns, it'd be a legitimate crown, but they kept the thorns in it. Right, and that's what that was what hurt Jesus was the fact that people mocked him, 
by making these statements that saying, oh, you know, you're just a preacher, you're just a prophet. And what the transfiguration does is it shows us that no, Jesus is the son of God, for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, he saw he, he was talking with Moses and Elijah, right, and his face became and his clothes became dazzling white. Right? Um, so that's the next one. And then the final one, the institution of the Holy Eucharist. I don't know if this number is true. I've seen it. I've seen it everywhere. So there's probably some weight to it that 70% of Catholics don't believe in the real presence. Now, depends on who you survey, right? If you're surveying Catholics who are nominally Catholic, maybe they don't even go to mass every week. I can understand. But apparently this, a big portion of this study uh, are people that actually go to mass every week, right? And it all comes with our disposition, you guys. And I, and I say this because I, you know, I'm just going to say it. I don't think we should have Eucharistic ministers. I don't think anyone should take it on the hand. And I think we should all be kneeling on the tongue. I think that is the most appropriate way to receive the Son of God in your, into your body. Most appropriate way. Your, your disposition towards the sacrament. If you saw Jesus today, what would you do? You would, you would fall on your face. I know I would, I would fall on my face. Sometimes I wanna take communion that way. And I, and I know I can't, right? Cause I'll be blocking the person behind me, but I go on my knees because I know that this is the son of God. And for a long time in my life, I didn't believe that. I honestly can't say I believed it because I was committing mortal sin and just taking it anyway. And I didn't fully believe that this was really Jesus. I thought this was some sort of ritual, right? I would proclaim his word out loud, but I wouldn't actually believe it. And now that I have this faith that I believe that this is truly to the son of God, I know that I can't just take it, you know, in a, in a Im impure way, in an inappropriate way. And I know, I know you might be thinking like, well, Eucharistic ministers are necessary. Okay. They're called extraordinary Eucharistic ministers. Okay. Um, in circumstances where a priest cannot give communion to someone in a hospital and you need someone to do it, totally fine. I totally agree with that. I think that's totally legit. But if you have a really big church and maybe you got to get things going, things are taking too long because we live in this American culture where things take too long, you get impatient, people will leave. Um, no, just wait. In fact, take the time to sp pray more, okay? And, and I'm, I'm telling you, like, I, it's, it's funny. I went to this, um, I didn't go to this church, but I heard about it. There's a church where I live where they actually have signs at the back door while mass is going on that says, you know who left, who, you know who left mass early? Judas, <laughs> right? Now, okay, I, I, gotta, I gotta be charitable here. If you have a legitimate reason to leave early, I get it, I understand. Legitimate reason, okay? That's between you and God. But man, the, the reverence for the Eucharist, um, needs to go back, back to where way it was, I think, because, and that, that's what these mysteries are all about. That's, this is why I want to, I'm telling you guys about the luminous mysteries, because I think some people like kind of ignore them or don't pray them just because they're, they're, um, post Vatican II stuff. And, I, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of fruit that comes out of post Vatican II stuff. Okay. It, it is a official, you know, um, council. It is. It's the Council of the Church. Now, of course, there's people who use the whole spirit of Vatican II thing that corrupted a lot of, um, you know, things that were going on. And I don't think that was the church's fault. I think that was just people in the church trying to uh, promote their agendas. But, you know, I, I encourage you, pray the, pray the uh, mysteries of the Lord. And I'll leave you guys with this last thing. There have been exorcists, Father Chad Ripperger included, who during sessions have seen Pope John Paul II liberate people. They've seen it, okay? Now, for me, that, that's, a, that's a good sign that, he, that this man was holy. A very good sign that this man was holy, that if he shows up in an exorcism and helps liberate people, right? That's awesome. And I personally have a connection to Pope John Paul II. And I, and I don't wanna see, I, I hate it when people like talk talk crap about him. It drives me crazy because that man changed my life. He, I know he definitely was praying for my family's conversion. If you guys don't know my story, um, you can check it out on my channel. Just look up uh, Pope John Paul II conversion story. It has like 10,000 views. It's probably the most popular video on my channel. Um, but 
he greatly affected me. And, and the Luminous Mysteries are genius. They're, they're really important. And I think I encourage everyone to pray them. And I know Our Lady would encourage you to pray because he had, she had a great relationship with Pope John Paul II. Um, you know, when he was trying, when he almost got assassinated by that sharpshooter who missed, you know, not that far away from him. Um, what he said was that one man pulled the trigger and another guided the bullet, right? And it was on the feast of Our Lady of Fatima, right? And those same bullets, if you don't know this, the same bullets that Pope John Paul II was shot with was placed, I believe, in the, the crown of the Fatima statue that they were uh, carrying around Rome. So beautiful story. All right, guys. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you all next time. God bless.